Question 5 then from the 2018 SQA Higher Maths Paper 2. Lines in a triangle. Seven marks here in three parts. Steps you through it. You're given this triangle PQR with these two vertices known and you have to find the equation of this line they're calling L1 which is the perpendicular bisector of PQ for three marks. Now there are three lines that you should know in a triangle. There's the median which goes from a vertex to the midpoint of the other side. There's the altitude which goes from a vertex perpendicularly to the other side. And there's this one which doesn't necessarily go through one of the vertices, unless it's isosceles, which is the perpendicular bisector, so named because it's perpendicular, so it's at right angles, and it bisects the side. To get its equation, you need a point on it. Well, it's not going through the vertices, but you'll be using them anyway to get this point here, which is the midpoint. So that's the first bit. What's the midpoint of PQ? Now, there's only one mark for this and it can be stated. If it's obvious what's halfway between these numbers, you could just put them down. If it's not so obvious or you want to show the working, you can say it's the average of the coordinates. So 3 plus 9 divided by 2 is the average of the x's. 4 and negative 2, I think I'll show it that way, 4 and negative 2, although that's just 4 minus 2 divided by 2 is the average of the y-coordinate. Then that means that the point's going to be 12 over 2 is 6, and that just comes to 2. 2 over 2 is 1. That's worth a mark. Now you need its gradient. Well, you only know one point in the line, so I can't use that y2 minus y1 business. So you'll have to reference it to some line you do know, a line that's either parallel or perpendicular. Well, you know the perpendicular one. Get the gradient of PQ. Gradient of PQ will be the difference in the y coordinates over the difference in the x coordinates. I just write it that, but you can write y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1 if you wish. Or, because it's only the one mark, you can just go straight in with the numbers. Difference in the y coordinates. Make sure you use the y coordinates on top. Negative 2, take away 4. Or you could write 4, take away negative 2, but just make sure you keep the other one in the same order. I've done this, take away that, so I'm doing 9, take away 3, keeping it in the same order. That comes to negative 6 upon 6, which is negative 1. So the gradient of PQ is negative 1. Well, you're not getting a mark for that. You're only getting one mark for then saying that means the gradient of line 1 will be the negative of the reciprocal, turn upside down and change sign, which is 1. Now you get a mark. And then lastly, put it all together. What is the equation of this? Now don't just immediately leap in with y minus b, whoops, etc. Just check first of all you haven't got a simple line, a line that's either vertical, so its equation is x equals, horizontal, so its equation is just y equals, or if you know where it cuts the y-axis, if that x coordinate is zero, because in that case I would go in with y equals mx plus c. But having said all that, in this case I'm just going to put down y minus b is mx minus a, because none of those conditions apply. I've just got two values here. So y minus the y coordinate, go in pairs, because it's a gradient after all. Gradient is the difference in the y's divided by the difference in the x's. y minus the y coordinate of the point, the point on the line, not any of the others, is the gradient, the gradient of the line times x minus the x coordinate, which is six. Now don't leave it as y minus one is x minus six. You won't get the mark. You need to tidy it up. So y would be x minus the 6 plus the 1. y equals x minus 5. Now you get the mark. Or you can rearrange that into any form you like by putting various number of terms on either side. You could have the x along with it and leaving the negative 5 and so on. So for part B, this other line L2 has been introduced here. It says the equation of L2, which is also a perpendicular bisector, the perpendicular bisector of PR, so that means it's perpendicular and it bisects, but it gives you the equation. So normally it would have asked you for that equation and then work out the point of intersections of the lines, but here it just says, here's the equation, so what's the point of intersection of the lines L1 and L2? Well, it's simultaneous equations. 
intersections, you must get the same answer on both equations at the same time there, at the same point. So if I call that one and call that two, I've got two choices. I can use substitution or I can use elimination. I just prefer to use substitution because that's the consistent technique that you use everywhere. So I'm going to substitute 2 because that's in a substitutable form because it says y equals in 1. It may turn out to be the same amount of work. It may turn out that if there's less work, doing it the other way. Which means that wherever you see y in this equation, number 1, this one that's getting substituted in will get replaced by x minus 5. So y three times, well I'm not going to write y, I'm going to write x minus 5. Plus x is 25. So that means you've got 3x minus 15 plus x is 25. You can tidy that up in one go. That's 4x equals 40, so x equals 10. There's one mark. Actually, it seems quite long when you spell it all out. And then substitute that answer into the simpler one, the one you substituted, in number 2, which means that will read y equals 10 minus 5, don't fall off, so y equals 5, and that's the mark. You actually get the marks just for stating x equals and y equals, because, because strictly speaking, those are the coordinates. I just prefer to finish it off. C is the point, 10, 5. However, if you wanted to use elimination instead, then what you would have done is to put in line 2, only make it match this column for column, so it's a only a little bit of rearrangement. Y was already in that side. Bring the X over, so it'll be a negative X and keep them in their columns, leaving the constant negative five on that side. So there's equation two, well, slightly rearranged. And admittedly, if you do that, it's fairly trivial to solve that pair because the X's will go immediately under addition, which is the ideal combination. You're much less likely to make mistakes adding than subtracting. So adding them, you've got four Y, they cancel, and that comes to 20. So immediately you've got y equals 5. Then popping it either into this one or into the original one. If I stick with this one, if I say substitute y equals 5 in 2, that means I've got 5 take away x is negative 5. So just taking the x to this side so it's positive and throwing that 5 away because I just want x on its own. It comes across as plus 5 x equals 10. But that does look a bit neater than the substitution method. I still always use substitution anyway. But that does look a bit neater than the substitution method simply because there's less ink on the page. Now the last part. It says, this point C that you just worked out turns out to be the center of a circle which passes through the vertices of the triangle. But then you should have known that anyway. That could have been a question on its own for a few more marks because if those points are meant to lie in a circle, those vertices of the triangle, that means the sides of the triangle, these two sides of the triangle here, well, in fact, all three, but these are the two relevant ones, must be chords of the circle. And you already know that if you've got a chord and you take the perpendicular bisector, that passes through the center. So those two perpendicular bisectors must intersect to the centre. But anyway, what does it say? You've got this circle, the circumcircle, the circle that encloses the triangle there. What's the equation of this circle? Well, here's the circle then. So to get its equation, I need its centre. I've got it, but I need its radius. And the radius is the distance from the centre to any point in the circumference you happen to know. Well, I don't know R, so I've got a choice of these two. And it'll make no difference which one I use because you're just going to be using Pythagoras. I think I'll use this because the numbers are closer together. Well, the one and the five are quite close. I'll use this one anyway. There's the radius. And of course, you get the radius by Pythagoras because I know these numbers. And you could show the working just in a little triangle. If I put this little right angle triangle in here, this point's at nine, this point's at 10. So the difference in the x's is one. This y coordinate's negative two. It's to go all the way up to 5, so that's an increase of 7. So I've got a right angle triangle with sides 1 and 7. So that means that the radius is going to be using Pythagoras. Now this is the thing though. You could put the square root, but 
You really just want r squared for the formula, so you could just leave it as Pythagoras without the square root part finishing it off. Will simply be the difference in the x coordinate squared, that's negative 1 squared, plus the difference in the y coordinate squared, which is 7 squared. Then actually need that bracket. Now that's just 1 and 49. That means that r squared is 50, and that's all you need to know. If you want, you could put it aside. That means r is root 50. And certainly in the marking scheme, it gives the mark for root 50. But I'm pretty sure r squared is 50 would get the mark. Because even that root 50, if it was meant to be an answer, I didn't ask for it. But if they'd asked for the radius, root 50 wouldn't have been acceptable because it's not simplified. That's 25 times 2. So that's actually 5 root 2. So I'm taking that as the answer. Then you just put it all together. What's the equation of a circle? The simplest form of the equation of a circle is that displaced form. x minus the x coordinate. y minus whoops, the y coordinate squared is equal to the radius squared. And the radius squared you knew was 50 anyway. That's what gets the mark. Now, I'm underlining this part. One thing to watch out for, though, is if you've written r equals root 50, which you may well have done, don't put your answer down as x minus the 10 squared, y minus the 5 squared equals the root 50 squared, and leave it like that. That's not simplified. You'd have to square that back up to 50. If you left it like that, you wouldn't get that mark. So, square it out, then you'll get the mark.